I had a hard time switching from Unity to Unreal because I watched all these tutorials and they always said, this is an actor. It's just like a Unity game object. And that's just wrong. It's actively misleading. There's nothing in Unreal that is just like a Unity game object. If you have to think of something as a Unity game object, I would recommend thinking of scene components as Unity game objects. It's also wrong, but it's wrong in a way that's more obvious, so you can work around it easier. The basic issue is that in Unity, you can just nest stuff inside of stuff. You put a game object inside a level, then you put another game object inside that game object, then you put another game object inside that game object. But that's not really how Unreal is built to work. It's aggressively optimized, so it has a fairly shallow method of creating objects. You're not supposed to really nest them quite like that. This means that Unreal will frequently misunderstand what you're doing if you try and naively nest objects. So your Unity workflows will work against you. In this case, for example, I've created this little spaceship. I've got all of these components that I just brought in from Blender, and they're all inside of a main core component. In Unity, this would work fine. I could then convert everything over into a prefab or convert pieces piecemeal, whatever I want, right? But here in Unreal, things are a little bit different, because I've created 90 actors. These are all actors, static mesh actor. Even the point lights are point light actors. This is an issue, because actors are buckets. So what Unreal is hearing me say is, I want to create 90 different buckets. Each of these buckets should have its own individual event system because that's how buckets work. Now, the fact that each of these buckets only contains one very simple little scene component is irrelevant. According to Unreal, these are all their own buckets, and you don't put buckets inside of buckets. This means that if I were to, for example, grab the core object and hit Control-C, Control-V, I will get a copy of that one object. None of the child objects come with it. Similarly, if I were to delete that one object, none of the child objects get deleted. Unreal understands that we want these buckets to walk around together, but it doesn't understand that we want one bucket to be king bucket, and the rest of the buckets to be inside that bucket. It's just not how Unreal processes things. If we want to see it more concretely, here is a bunch of the stuff that I got from Blender just static meshes of all sorts. If I drop these into the level, they become static mesh actors. A static mesh actor is a bucket containing a single scene component. That one scene component is the mesh. It's rendering that one mesh. But that doesn't mean that the bucket is the same as a game object. And it's important to understand that if we're trying to nest things, we don't want to try and nest buckets. We have to understand that actors are not game objects. Let's take a closer peek. When it comes time for us to turn these ships into individual blueprints, we can do that by selecting all of these objects that we've put into the level and creating a blueprint right here. Normally, we'd have the option of creating a new subclass, but this is such a complicated object that there's no subclass it can be. We could also do child actors or harvest components. Harvest components is the right option because it means that we're going to put everything into one big bucket, which is how it should be in general. So when we do that, we get this. This is not in the level, this is in the object editor. And in the object editor, we've got all of these static mesh components rather than static mesh actors. We're inside an actor, so we can just put components in, and we can nest them any way we want, as deeply as we want. There's no reason why we can't have it, just like in Unity, 900 things deep. But this isn't in the level. This is in the object editor. And this is where we should be creating our ship, in the object editor. Because our ship is an object. It's really important to understand that this is the standard approach when you're creating stuff like this. You don't generally make each individual piece an actor, because 
the engine really doesn't understand that. Let me show you. If we were to undo that, yep, come on, undo, there we are. We can come back over here and convert this over into uh, child actors instead. When we do that, on the right, it looks pretty much the same, but on the left, it's pretty different. See the difference? All of these are child actor components. When you try and put an, an actor inside of an actor, <clears throat> Unreal really doesn't know what to do with that. So what we've actually got here is, this is, for example, a cockpit mesh. The cockpit mesh is being displayed by a scene component. In order to put that scene component into a level, we put it into a bucket called an actor. In order to put that bucket, called an actor, into another actor, we have to put it into another scene component. So we've got a scene component in a bucket, in a scene component, in a bucket. Which is obviously not the ideal solution. There are times when you're going to need to do this, when you will need to have a bucket inside of a bucket. But in general, you want to try and architect your stuff to not do this. And one of the ways you do that is by making sure that you understand what you're creating when you create custom blueprints. Here's an example. Let's undo that for now. Uh, and we've got this guy here. I've made a special blueprint for this one guy. All this does is say, engine reporting in. So if I hit play, there it is, engine reporting in. The problem is, I've created this custom blueprint by simply clicking on one of these engines and then making it into a custom blueprint. But the new subclass is Static Mesh Actor. I've created a custom bucket. So when I try and make this ship into its own thing, just select all of these objects here and then go ahead and make that into a blueprint by harvesting the components. It looks the same, and there's our standout little object, but I attached that special functionality to a bucket, and so now it's not here anymore. You can no longer see anything in the upper left-hand corner. It's no longer reporting in, because it no longer exists. I deleted the actor, now I've undeleted it. There it is. I deleted the actor when I went to harvest all of the components. This wouldn't be a problem if I created the engine as it's a custom component rather than as a custom actor. It's incredibly critical that you understand when you need, an, when you need a component and when you need an actor. An actor is a bucket, and in many cases you won't need a bucket. So if I wanted to create a custom component for this engine, I could do that by simply creating a new blueprint class like so. And you can see that we have the option to create scene components, which I just did by clicking on it. We can call this engine. If we open this up, we're going to get a slightly more restrained and constricted view than we would normally get, and that's because a scene component is just one scene component. At this stage, I don't know of any way to nest them in any sort of meaningful sense. We're just creating that one engine right now. However, we created it as a generic scene component not as a static mesh component. So we want to change this over to a static mesh component. There it is. Once we've done that, we're going to be able to, we can also have chosen static mesh from the dropdown originally, by the way. Uh, once we've done that, we can easily change the class defaults to point to any static mesh we want. And this can be changed anywhere that we use an engine. So for example, if we come over here into this, and we decide that we want to add in an engine, we can just drop our engine in, there it is, inside the point light for no particular reason. Just attach that to the scene root here. This is what it looks like, and we can change that default to something else. This is super handy because over here in the engine we can add variables like uh, price, make that a float, and uh, fuel use, and propulsion, and whatever else we want, right? And it can be a stand-in for any engine. So over here, we could select, oh, that's not it, there it is. Over here, we could select this, and you can see that we can change the price and the fuel use and the propulsion as we see fit, as well as changing the engine to whatever we want and moving it to wherever we want it to be on the model. What 
whatever we need. You can also create new child objects that have specific prices, fuel uses, and propulsion, or you can import those values from a spreadsheet. Either way, this is very similar to what you would do in Unity creating your own game object. The only constraint here is that this is just one static mesh. It doesn't have a lot of nested elements to it on its own. So if you have something really complicated going on, you're going to need some slightly different approach in order to, for example, attach lights to it. This is a little bit more supported than you might think. If we were to open this mesh up, we actually have a lot of options as to how to customize these meshes, and that includes socket managers. So you could add sockets, and then you could just automatically fill those sockets, and there's a lot of other stuff you can do. But in general, you're going to always be thinking about whether this object needs to be a bucket, that is to say an actor, or whether it needs to be a scene component. Scene components are a lot easier to use. They're a lot more flexible. You can nest them a million layers deep. But actors are a little bit more kludgy because buckets don't like going inside of buckets. And that's it. Have a fun time.